Criminal activities generate enormous profits, the legitimate possession of which is difficult to justify. Transforming a suitcase full of dirty money into a current account with legal tender is an activity which is highly dangerous for society. It guarantees the free enjoyment of the fruits of crime. It distorts market competitiveness and artificially lowers prices, contributing to unemployment. According to experts, between 2 and 5% of the world economy is generated by the laundering of money from crime. Dedicated as they are to secrecy, the crime syndicates active in money laundering are difficult for international police to infiltrate, and this is even more the case with a hidden camera. This has not, however, deterred a brave investigative reporter called Tony Papaleo. Tony is a partner of many international journalism organizations and secretary of the Association of European Journalists in the Czech Republic. Together with other colleagues from the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, he has documented the international trafficking of human body parts. As a correspondent for Slovakian state television, he has verified the correct management of international adoptions. For the Global Investigative Journalists Network, he has succeeded in blocking an illegal tender for 30 million euros. These images of Tony, passing under the name of Corleone, who undersigns bearer shares, have been used by the daily newspaper Hospodarske Novini in order to denounce existing regulations. To infiltrate the world of money launderers, Papaleo slowly and gradually managed to gain trust among criminals using his real name. Presenting himself as a corrupt journalist with serious drug and alcohol problems, Papaleo builds on this image until, in June 2012, in Bratislava, an informer proposes an urgent financial job in Hong Kong for a friend. Convinced that he has finally managed to bait a big fish, Tony, together with his colleague Ivan Brada, arrives at the appointment of the hidden camera. Giorgio Armani, <laughs> Antonio Aldo Papaleo, Giorgio I introduced myself to them with my true name and profession. I even showed them my journalistic ID. During our first meeting, they were not giving me much information. In reality, it was very clear, only the fact that the business in himself was not legal. Uh, that it would take just a few days of my time in Hong Kong. In order to get more information, I try to appear very scared. I need money, but I'm not such a good way to take any sort of risk. It could be But what kind of? But they were sure to be dealing with a very corrupted person with very serious problem of alcohol and drugs. That made them much more comfortable to pay me some money and to hire me. At the end of our first meeting, I was alone with my informer and I tried to ask him much more information. But the point was that he truly knows nothing. We meet for the first time Saturday and the day after, Sunday morning, we went to buy my ticket for Hong Kong. They anticipate me money for the expenses. Uh, but I was not very comfortable in receiving this money for the simple reason that this action could have been interpreted by a judge as my participation to a crime. That's why I deposited the money on the bank account of the European Association of Journalists to have the money accounted by a no-profit organization.
five days, uh, any day, 50 euros. Euro. That's the next 250. Okay. I can use my 100 euros. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, Monday, I was flying. And they will ask you uh, in the customs when you will come to Hong Kong because they will put mm -hmm. uh, the reason, reason, two reasons. At the airport in Hong Kong, it was a young boy unknown to me. He was from Prague and he was a complice of suspect number one. In Hong Kong, I immediately had to confirm it was a money laundering case. Basically, they instruct me to clone it two different companies and to make certain financial operations which, through nature, could only be not legitimate. Very easy. So tell them that you are need two Hong Kong companies uh -huh. uh, with bank account. And little, it's no risk there. It's Logan has nothing here. Yeah? It's now our existing companies, and they they did some bank operations, and now uh, will be transferred to these companies by the contract, and it will be something happen. Nobody can, can complain you and nothing because uh, they did something else now and it will be seen that this company which uh, you will set up now is five months after. And, uh, but you know, it, it, it's very hard to investigate something uh, when you will be from Europe to Hong Kong because when it was a British colony here and British people from London sent something here to Hong Kong. No answer, okay. because it's China. Yeah, okay. And uh, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot imagine how how somebody from Europe will send something to China. China will send something to Italy. I did register the two companies. This was legally feasible. It was not a crime. Those are their official papers. What I could not do really was to open the two bank accounts. So I started to invent excuses and justifications and to create continuous new troubles in order to delay the process. Friday is bank holiday and it's not possible to meet anyone Friday. In reality it was just faking. After the first two or three meetings I was just stepping inside banks and asking visit cards of bank officers uh, claiming that I was too busy to have appointment the same day but that I want a contact to set up a later meeting. I need to talk with someone for the opening of a new account. Okay, yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, but the normal procedure is three to four I know, weeks. I know. Just I'm happy to talk with me and it appears very lucky. And they make a copy of passport, passport and, and everything. And, and pay documents, yeah? Apparently it was impossible to open quickly this bank account. The Ensign Bank will take one to three weeks and I have to call them. Bank of China it's and... A, it's bullshit. One Yesterday to three weeks. I've been in Hang Seng, yeah? Okay. Next week, I will have everything. Uh, and she was probably and, and prudential. I cannot, listen, but what I said to you, because now it's some rules, yeah? yeah? I cannot say somebody, and after you will call. Yeah. It doesn't exist. What do you sign in the Hank Seng? Uh, two or three pieces of paper that they submit me. And they were in uh, mostly in Chinese, so I did not care for what. But they were proposal or request for opening account. At the beginning, my justification were logical. Obviously, after days and days, I started to lose credibility. But somehow, I managed until the last day. One of the questions was, uh, uh, are you Italian, where did you born, blah, blah. But I was very tranquil, like, ah, I have been spending all my life abroad. and uh, bullshit, because if you call to the Hang Seng, mm -hmm. it's not possible that somebody pick up the phone, you know? I have personal number. And after 10 days, they realized it was better for me to go back to Bratislava and to come back to Hong Kong only once the bank would confirm me that the accounts were ready. Uh, we will see in, in uh, Bratislava. Back in Bratislava, I went to the High Presidium of 
the Slovak police. And I give a full report about what happened in Hong Kong. Then I had to wait for their replay. And they constrict me to create, to build up new stories. I had a game to lie. I started to invent personal problems and family problems. At the end, after seven or eight days, <laughs> Slovak police informed me that money laundering is not a crime in the Slovak law. And moreover, that they could not be sure that it was really dirty money. So they basically told me that I was on my own. I was very disappointed by the Slovak police, by the Slovak authorities. Therefore, I decided to complain about it to Interpol in Bratislava. And then I decided to leave for Hong Kong again. My intention was to inform the last possible authorities on the world that could have interest in this case, the police of Hong Kong. Arrived in Hong Kong, I immediately went to Arsenal Road in Wan Chai, where is the high command of the Hong Kong police. In a few hours, they verified my story and my credentials, and that's why they asked me to bring them uh, undercover at my next appointment. I went to the meeting escorted by two cops in plain clothes. I had to go and shake his hand. And in the moment I did it, nine or ten people from the crow, from the mass, jump out and throw him on the ground under arrest. Actually, I'm a running man. I'm obliged to keep secret my whereabouts. And I'm just waiting for the end of this court case with the hope of being able to have a sort of private and personal life again. But I do consider possible the fact that this will not happen anymore.